Hello, my creeplings. Tonight we're talking about the first zombie film of the uh, season on this channel. It is Shaun of the Dead from 2004. From the minds of Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright comes America comes the uh, first zom rom com I think that ever hit the American shores. I don't know about Britain. This is a British production. It has got some dry British humor, but it's also got some laugh out loud moments. The zombie effects are amazing. I love the little homages to all the little all the little homages to all the zombie directors and movies that came before. And I love the fact that this actually, I believe, would mirror what would actually happen in the early days of a zombie apocalypse here. We all saw what happened in 2020 with COVID. How no one listened to the news and the, uh, the experts at the beginning of it. It's the same thing here. They pretty much all ignored it because, oh, it's the news. The news is just pressing. And then, it out, then the outbreak happened. So... Um, let's go through a cast list real quick. This has got a who's who of uh, British names here. That At least a lot of them that I can think of. So you've got Simon Pegg as Sean. Simon Pegg has done so many things with Edgar Wright. This is actually the beginning of what's called the Three Flavors Cornetto Trilogy with uh, Hot Fuzz and World's End, I believe is the name of the movie. Um, all from the minds of Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright. They also did a... A sci-fi comedy called I believe it's called Spaced that is on my list of stuff to find um but otherwise we've got names I'm looking at Nick Frost plays Ed for also does a lot with Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright he was also with Simon Pegg and Paul which was oh god that was freaking hilarious we might talk about that one later Bill Nighy plays Philip um Sean's stepdad and um, Bill Nighy is just, I believe he played the character named Victor in Underworld, uh, Davy Jones from the um, Pirates of the Caribbean movies, a million other things. The man's an amazing actor, and he just chef's kiss on a lot of the stuff that he does. Um, Penelope Wilton plays Barbara, which is Sean's mom. She is, at least I'm familiar with her from Downton Abbey, where she played Matthew's mother. I'm sure she's been in a lot of other uh, well-received things, but I do I do love her in this. And then I'm not sure who the rest of the cast list is because I do not watch as much British TV as I used to. PBS doesn't import too much over here. At least my local PBS doesn't import as much as it used to. Um, but again, I do love British TV and all that. So eventually I'll probably pick more up. So going straight into the story, we have Sean is approaching middle age. He has no direction in life. Middle management at an electronics store, still lives with his best friend from high school, from actually probably childhood, Ed. He also lives with a college uh, buddy named Pete. He's dating a girl named Liz. And um, they hang out at the same bar all the time. Because Ed is a creature of habit, therefore that makes Sean a creature of habit. Because they're like two peas in a pod. Um, and Liz is getting sick of this. Liz is always trying to challenge Sean to do more with his life. Do more. Eventually she gets sick of it. And they break up. The straw that breaks the camel's back on that is he goofs up their anniversary dinner. Uh, just at the beginning of what's going on with the whole sickness thing and the zombie changes. Um, you get hints of this in the background if you watch. You see people that are sick and you see a lot of what I call the working dead uh, phenomenon, which I unfortunately am part of the working dead phenomenon. You work in retail. You work in middle management in an office. You, your days are the same over and over and over again so you get this kind of uh, feeling when you're going through your day-to-day -day drudgery you feel like a zombie that's what i call the working dead you see a lot of that around sean which is why it's so easy to disregard the zombie apocalypse happening around you because it starts slow 
So Liz gets fed up and they break, Liz and Sean break up. Of course, Sean goes with Ed to the Winchester pub and completes, gets completely and totally drunk off his ass. Again, pardon my language. We're, we're going to be doing a lot of that. Um, on their stumbling walk home, they pass what looks like a couple making out until you do a double take when she rips his throat out. But Sean and Ed don't see it. It's going on behind them. They pass a guy who's... <sighs> but he does it every time they stop. They're, they're singing a song, so every time they stop and someone's supposed to yell in the song, this guy does the zombie mode, and they're like, cool, he's into it. So they get home. They find out... Well, Pete gets pissed off because they're... Um, making noise you find out pete's been bitten by some muggers and they pass out um and next morning again sean goes to the shop and he stumbles through his neighborhood and you start if you look real i don't even have to say real close if you look in the background that you see signs of the zombies everywhere but he's so hungover and so oblivious they don't get it until they find an undead girl in the backyard. They think she's hung over and drunk. And then she falls over on a st uh, stake or something and rises again. They're like, oh, crap. Hence begins the realization they are in the beginning of a zombie apocalypse. So the plan is for them when they finally get their heads together is go get mom. Barbara and Philip. Although Philip's, you find out Philip's been bitten because mom makes a quick phone call. Um, mom's kind of the oblivious doddering mom. She's so sweet, but she's not quite getting it that there's something wrong. Uh, and then the other, the other half of the plan is go around Liz's, pick up Liz and her and David and Diane. Sorry, couldn't remember the name of the other roommate. And hole up somewhere safe. Well, of course, somewhere safe for those two idiots. Especially Ed is the Winchester. Oh, my God. Thought process behind that. It's got big, thick doors. They're bolted. And there's a rifle above the bar. I guess any place is better than any other. All kind of hell breaks loose when they get there you find out philip's been bitten but mom won't leave without philip so eh, they take him they end up wrecking the car that they're in after they have to dispatch a philip because he's turned hence comes the trek through the suburbs of london to the winchesters winchester winchesters is a completely different thing um Mom gets bitten somewhere in here, but manages to keep it manages to keep it hidden. They do get to the Winchester. It's a big fight on how to get in, and David, such a wanker, uh, <laughs> twat, twat's what that's what they use it to to call him. Um, busts a window before Sean can say, "Hey, there's a back door." So Sean leads the crowd of zombies away while they all settle in. Finally, shows back up. Turns out later that the crowd of zombies followed him. It, it's just all hell breaks loose. By the end of it, the only ones that are left are Liz and Sean. And um, the effects are really solid. The, the soundtrack is freaking great. I think, I know that the, for the score, they used a lot of sounds from Dawn of the Dead. Um, a lot of like uh, musical stings and things like that. There's... When David finally buys it. Now, I don't know, for my American audience, if I have any more of an international audience, great. I love you guys. Thank you. Um, but I don't know for my, I'm assuming most of my audience is, is based in the States. I don't know if you know this, but the nickname for David in England is not Dave. It's usually Daff with two Fs. So if I slip into that, it's it's David. Uh, when they pull Dave, Daff through the window, the, the zombies get him. There's this whole, the, oh, oh, it's so great. It reminds me of The Walking Dead with the intestines and the limbs and the head and really good effect on that one. Um, like I said, this actually kind of mirrors the apathy that people have 
in their day-to-day lives that they don't even notice there's a tragedy going on around them. Um, I really don't want to bring 2020 too much into this, but I mean, that's kind of how it felt at the beginning of, of that whole era of trying to shelter in place and everything. You had some people just had no idea what was really going on because they don't listen to the news. They don't read newspapers. They ignore the news in their social feed. I mean, I'm even guilty of that to some extent. So yeah, if the zombie apocalypse ever happened, those would be the early days of it. We wouldn't figure it out until someone chomped us or we saw it happen on live TV in front of us. And even then, I still don't think that the general public would believe it or be wise to it with enough time to actually scramble and um, make short work of it. So it's a very interesting social commentary at the same time. Um, this was shortly, when I say shortly, I mean within a decade after the 9-11 tragedy. So there's also a lot of commentary on that. I'll, I'll let you watch it and decide how much you pick up on that or how much you don't. Um, but I cannot sing the praises of this movie enough. This is, I tend to like horror comedies. I'm not going to lie. So this is one of my one of my top ones. Um, this still does not beat out the Evil Dead series with Bruce Campbell. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go off on Bruce Campbell like today, but I'm just gonna say that trilogy of movies in the television series probably is my top in horror comedy. This is definitely shortly after that on the list, though. I will rewatch this movie whenever I get the chance to. Like, if I'm in a hotel and I only have access to basic cable and this is, like, showing on Comedy Central or USA or something, it's staying on. Um, I love Simon Pegg. I, oh, God. If you ever get the chance to watch Paul about the alien, oh, my God, that movie is so hilarious. It's very much, like, in the vein of this where it, it, Makes little wink and nudge um, references to a lot of classic sci-fi in pop culture. I really did enjoy that. Um, I loved him in the new Star Trek reboot as Scotty. Uh, What else has he done that I've watched? He's, I think he was in a Mission Impossible that I watched that I liked. And I don't normally like the Tom Cruise Mission Impossible movies, but for some reason he stuck, he sticks out to me as like, I just, I love him. He's great. Um, Same thing with uh, the Cornetto trilogy. I've seen all three of them. I have not watched them all back to back, but I have seen all three of them. Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg are like a dream team couple. They are like, this is going to be the weirdest analogy ever. They are like the Jim Henson and Frank Oz of their little, I don't want to say little, but their circle of people that they work with. They are, you know, hand in hand, the uh, Spielberg and Lucas of British comedy. Uh, I highly, highly recommend this one for for anybody over the age of 15. Um, Anything younger than that, there's some language references, there's some... Um, adult jokes. There are references to weed. Of course, there's all the alcohol. Um, I think 15 would be a good age to watch an unrated version of this, like, as it not cut down for television straight on the DVD. It's just freaking funny, guys. It is funny. It is well shot. It is well acted. I cannot stress this enough. <laughs> If you get the DVD, there or possibly the Blu-ray, again, I, I have this on DVD. I've had this probably since it first released on DVD. There's a lot of great extras that jump you into the rabbit hole of how they made this and all kinds of fun information. And if you're like me, you always hunger for more information. Uh, it was neat to see Bill Nighy not be a bad guy, bad guy, just a sympathetic character for once. Because a lot of what I've seen him in, he's played the bad guy. I just, I still keep going back to how funny the dynamic between Sean and Ed is. And there is a funny, there's a a humorous little 
there's a, a woman that Sean knows. I, I guess it was an, another college friend that just moved into their neighborhood. They run into her. So Sean's group that's going through the London, I, I want to say suburbs, but it's probably just a neighborhood or group of neighborhoods going towards the Winchester. Uh, the uh, the woman that they know, Yvonne, Yvette, Yvonne, Yvonne, I think, is going the opposite direction with her group, and they almost exactly mirror each other. Um, it's it's cute. Uh, then the trying to act like a zombie uh, moment is funny because Diane's an, an actress who probably doesn't work a whole lot, it sounds like, but she tries to give them acting tips on how to act like a zombie. I also, strangely enough, thought that the zombie that they had, that they were observing... The man, the man in the pajamas looked a little like Colin Mockery from Whose Line Is It Anyway? I know it's not, but oh my God, he reminded me of him. And I just kept thinking about, I kept expecting him to do some kind of Colin Mockery-ish improv thing, but that's how my brain works. So yes, if I were to do a star review, five stars. Um, definitely recommending this one. Definitely making people watch this one. I'm like, oh, what do you want to, what do you want to watch? I don't know. Do you guys like zombie movies? Do you guys like comedies? Because <laughs> I've got the movie for you. I, I will sit and make everybody watch this movie. Um, I just, I can't sing the praises enough. It's a very, I mean, basic story. There, I mean, there are more layers to it, but I want you guys to discover it. Um, so on that note, go out and watch this. Enjoy yourself. Get a big bowl of popcorn. This is a good popcorn movie. Um... And uh, have a good evening, my creeplings. Good night.